Right. First ultrasonic cleaner I've any real experience of, and I bought a three litre one. Knowing what I know now, I would probably have hung fire and bought a six litre one. This is just about big enough for doing one carb at a time. Um, for me, it's probably fine because I'm never really going to do this on an industrial scale. But for the extra money, I might have gone for a bigger size. thing you need to think about, though, is if you're buying solution for actually cleaning carbs, the bigger size uses more solution. I can clean all these carbs with perhaps two lots. That's one lot that I've used so far. This will probably do me, you know, I've got another set of carbs easily. If it was bigger, it'd still get as mucky. It might, might actually be that I use more of the consumables. Right, how do I set it up? I want the temperature to be about 55 degrees. It can be more, but this is between 50 and 80. So I'm gonna go for 55. It has a heater in, it takes quite a while to heat up. So I'm gonna pop in a little bit of boiling water as well to try and get it so that it's near to the temperature I want quicker. If you put the water in cold, this was from the hot tap, you might end up where you're waiting a long time. The temperature gauge went up quite quickly, quite impressed with that. Now it does say, don't fill it above the indicated mark. Now remember, I'm going to put some cleaning fluid in and I'm also got to put the parts in. And as Archimedes discovered, if the bath's too full when you get in it, you'll end up with a big puddle. Go with just a little bit more boiling. I think we're going to be about there. Watch it be too hot now. But there isn't really a too hot. Right, so I've got it to the temperature that I want. Next thing I'm going to do, it mixes 10 to 1. 10 parts water to one part of this. 3 litres it's supposed to be. 2 litres is what I've actually put in it. Yeah, so I'll go for 200 ml. Oh, I don't mind it being a bit too hot. It'll only hurt my hands when I put my fingers in to pull things out. 200 ml of carburetor cleaner. You can see lots of different things that people use. I did try it with fairy liquid. It wasn't anywhere near as successful. So, thought you get some lovely little jugs from charity shops. Right, we're ready to go now. So let's uh, get the parts and put them in. So, got the bits together. Now, a nifty thing that I saw on someone's lovely YouTube video was if you leave things in a plastic container, it'll still ultrasonically clean. However, you don't have to go scrabbling around looking for them. So what I'm gonna do is just put some into there, first of all. Get my carburetor and the port bowl. Always use the basket. You shouldn't have the top, the things you're cleaning touching the sides. It causes something called cavitation, I believe, which I think is what the whole process is about. Now, to me, it's still a little bit empty, so I'm going to shove that in as well. Let's just shove that over to one side. Should be fine. I'm going to give it a little bit of a top up. Now I can change the timer, but what I like to do is do 15 minutes, give it all a bit of a rattle around, have a look, perhaps if you a bit of a wipe on some bits, and then give it another 15 minutes. And all I have to do is.
Right then, so it's done its first 15 minutes. Let's have a look at where we're at. So I'll just empty that out. What I'll probably do is give this a little bit of a swell before I put some more in. Yeah, it's looking. You can see all the junk that's come off and they actually looked quite clean to start off with. Let's have a look at this. Wow. All right, I'm just going to turn it over. It's looking like it's doing okay. Let's put that out of the way. Now, I'm going to have to be quick here. Ow! I'm going to take that and just give that a quick wipe off. It might not get all this varnish off. A little bit of effort it might, but that's gonna go back in now. We'll top up. Set the timer again. Right then, let's see what we've got. I'm going to do the next carb in here, so I don't want to lose all of the fluid. And you do have to be careful you don't lose washes or anything. I'll take the rubbish with that. Try not to incur the wrath of my lung. One. You'll notice I've put thing in to catch any washes that decide they're going to make a break for freedom. Whoops, there's the, uh, the fibre one. Yeah, you'd expect that. Should replace that really. Looking good. Next I'll get the car body. Now I don't expect it to have got everything off at all. And it is very hot in your fingers. And you need to watch the drips as much as you need to watch them for your own safety. If you ruin the finishes on your, on your kitchen furniture, your own safety is definitely in question. You want all of the fluid off it, not just, you know, I'm going to run it for a while. Now at this point, if it was really not coming up, I'd give it a good scrub with a toothbrush and give it another round. I think for what I'm doing, this is coming up absolutely beautifully. Do you remember how dirty it was originally? Now I will take this into my workshop and blow it through with compressed air to dry it off before I shove it on a radiator to finish off with. And it's still got some, I think they call it lacquer or varnish. At this point, some people say, right, now vapour clean that. And I suspect that would be a good idea. I'm more worried about a working finish at the moment. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to worry. It's got all the stuff off that I wanted. 
Right, so our next thing is shove them to dry and put the next one on.